Well, we're back here again with another adventure. This is the uh, Squire Stratocaster by Affinity, uh, the Affinity by Fender. And um, what we're going to do, what the heck is that thought on there? I don't know, there's a piece of sludge, a piece of junk on there. Uh, we already looked at this guitar. We changed the strings. Uh, we put some black ties, string trees on there, and uh, we put the orange strings on here. And I was going to kind of leave this alone. And then I came across this pickguard set that I think will go very well with it in the rear door. Um, so we're going to switch this around uh, and start this project tonight. We may not finish it all. Uh, I may not even start it, but this is the introduction. There's the back piece that's going to go on. And then after that, I don't know what else I'm going to do. I don't have any other embellishments I think I'm going to, that I feel like doing for the um, the fingerboard or anything. I don't know. I may just put another decal on or just put these on and leave it alone. We'll see. I don't know. I'm going to try to save these strings. I do have a backup set of the orange Dion neons if I have to, but I'm going to try to make it through and keep these strings alive because they're only a couple weeks old and I'd hate to lose them. Uh, so we'll be back in a little bit. All right, so since we just got here and I just started this like we were doing a brand new setup, I checked, I had already uh, checked the uh, neck, the straightness, and the neck is straight. I double checked it again tonight. Um, the string height's pretty good. It's a little teeny bit high, so we may adjust that down here afterwards when we get done. Uh, so like I said, we're going to change the pick guard. And um, to do that, we need to remove the strings. And like I said, I'm going to try to save these and reuse them. So we'll be back. All right, so we're back again. We got the strings all off and put to the back. The next thing we're going to do is to remove the pick guard screws. And we've got to take all the knobs off. And I may change that other knob and go with a, the same style. Um, I don't know. It's kind of being silly with that, I guess, when I did it. But um, I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. But since this pick out is going away, I don't care. I mark it up. And all of it ends up underneath the uh, top hat anyway for the volume and tone controls so the the scuffing if there is any won't even show so we'll pull that up and we'll get this last wise guy out of here but I, uh, well seeing that big thrill huh? so we pop them off that's that number one Number two is we're going to take all the black screws out because that's what holds it down. And then we're going to have to take all the pickups out and all the controls out. And the five-way switch has all got to come out. So we've got a lot of coming out to do. So we'll get at this now. So we've got these for the five-way control that have to come out. They're short and they're different. So those clowns are out of there. Well, one of them is, and one of them's fighting back. So that's that. I gotta take those guys out. And I guess we'll do them first, and then we'll lift the uh, 11. One, one. So we're gonna disconnect these guys and there's a washer underneath it that we don't want to lose either and there's a washer underneath on the underside that we got to be careful not to lose also keep having all these ideas about what I want to do with stuff and it makes work for me which is a good thing because I really enjoy playing with these guitars I enjoy working on them uh, even more than I do playing them anymore. I don't, never was a very good guitar player. I like to sing more than I did anything else. And my voice has gone to hell in a handbasket since I got older. <clears throat> so there isn't much of that going on that's worth a damn anymore. So let's pop that out. And see if we can flip this over and get a good look at the inside. 
<clears throat> and there are these washers, I don't know if you can see, oh, I'm missing one there, um, that help secure these to the top. I think I've got another one of them. I knew I had one. This one right there. So we'll put this one on that one, just for the fun of it. So now we've got a balanced load, so to speak. All right, the next thing we have to do is to remove, what's the shielding like on this one? Oh, it's even better than that one, so that's good too. So we're going to get a shielding upgrade um, right away. We'll have to look in the back and see how that's going to fit. Let's take a look and see how the screws are going to line up, if we can tell. I can't really tell, but it's going to work. So we're not going to worry too much about it. i got to take the holes where the uh, shielding is coming through. Let's take the reflection out of our eyes. So like I said, the next thing we've got to do is take the pickups out. fingers on it we don't want to lose the spring down the gutter so that's that oh the other thing is that um, these pickup covers are also removable if I got a full set of blacks I may change these over to black I might I just might have a set so anyway I'm going to take these other two off and I'll be back all right for being a kind of a guy who Never leaves well enough alone. I'm always into messing with stuff. I look through my pile of pots. I have two black covers, uh, pickup covers, and they don't fit anyway. Um, I had some off-white ones, but they don't fit either. So what I'm going to do is use a magic marker and do the tops of these in black with a magic marker uh, just to change the bright white aspect of it to something that's uh, more interesting to me because I'd really like to put because the uh, pick guard has black running through it and these don't so now if we can do this I should put on a pair of rubber gloves but Mr. Dopo won't do it so let's do I've blackened out things before I don't want to do the sides, although maybe I could. This seems to be covering pretty well. Better than I thought it would. And once you put it on, nobody can really see the difference. So that's the way it would be if we just do the tops. You know, it would just be a black top, shiny. That's pretty good. Huh? And then have white wall tires like on the on the sides. So I think we'll do one more. And by the time I get done with this, I'll decide. Oh, 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 I may be stopping already. I'll decide whether or not I want to try to go to full black. Um, I don't know. That's wrestling around in my mind quite a bit. I got such a little mind for things to rattle around in. They can make an awful lot of noise in there. Well, that's covering extremely well. Wow, it's like they were spray painted with enamel. And it's not bleeding over the sides. That's kind of what I had in mind when I started. And then once I started, my feeble little mind changed a little bit. And I started thinking about doing the whole, the whole uh, cover black. I think I still may do that because this looks like it's working pretty well. And most of that bottom edge is going to be buried um, in the pick guard. So if we can do the uh, around the edge here carefully, we can have this thing done that way. Maybe I can pick it up with a screwdriver. What else can I use? I got something else over here. Oh, I know. I got an instrument I can hold on to them with. So let's try this fascinating idea. So if I do that to get a good grip, 
How's my camera angle? My paint job getting spied on? Oh, yeah. So let's see what we can do here with our full flat edge. It doesn't even have to be perfect because it's not going to show that much on the sides. The most important part is the top. And we've got that covered already, don't we? Just one white spot to find shape. Because like I said, this other part here really isn't even going to show. The only part that's going to show is this collar. I'm going to try to do the whole thing just because. I don't know why. Because I can't stop. I'm out of control. I'm a black marker fool. Got one place down there on the inside. Or is that just a reflection? It's a reflection. I'm trying to color in a reflection. That's why it doesn't work too good. Alright, so there's one done, almost. So we'll catch this here, right there. Cool. There's number one. Just wasting, wasting film. I'll be right back. So there's some other preparation we got to do to this to uh, get ready. Um, most of it's really simple. Let's throw our other spotlight on and get a little bit more light over here. All right, so these guys are all done. They're nice. They're drying up good. Uh, the color come out good. That's going to work very well in there. Now, on the back of the pickguard, this is shielding tape that helps to prevent some of the noise uh, that you pick up because you're actually broadcasting like an antenna. Uh, the pickups are trying to pick up the sound from the electric guitar, uh, the strings, but it also pick up any other sound that's kicking around. So the insulation, the, uh, the uh, foil tape helps to prevent that broadcasting from anywhere else getting into the guitar and the pickups. So we need to cut out some holes where screws are going to go, and where the um, volume and tone controls are going to go. We'll use an X-Acto knife and just take this stuff out with a quick little slice, get it out of the way. Um, we'll just make sure we get all the holes that are here. And especially these ones for the um, pickups, because they allow the pickup to move up and down on those springs that we took off before. So that they kind of float, if you know what I mean. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't be able to adjust them very well, I don't think. I just don't know why you can't have them rigid, but they're not. And uh, guitar people, I guess, have been doing this a hell of a long time. I'm much smarter than me. And even though I don't know the answers to some things, I assume they're doing it for a good reason. Um, and that's what you pay a company that makes your guitar or anything else that you buy. You're paying them for their knowledge to make something um, good for you so that you don't have to rethink the wheel. So now we've got the big holes to cut out here for the volume control part and the tone controls. We'll get these things out of the way. Leave them on the side. And then we'll be ready to put this all back together again. Alright, and we'll have another project done. Um, See so you now, isn't this good arts and crafts? Fun stuff to do. You get to play with knives and stuff. Uh, and not get yelled at uh, because you're supposed to be doing that. Now, the other thing they do is they put a couple of layers of protective coating plastic over these pick guards when they make them. I like to remove them before I put them on 
because if you screw this all down and you go to take it off, all the screws have it all underneath every little hole and it tends to stick and stay there. And then you got to loosen every stinking screw up again to get the plastic out from underneath. So let's see if we can get the second layer back out of here. You just got to start it in one place, just like that. And then you get it like a tiger by the tail. And just pull it all up. <clears throat> now I think you can see how shinier this presents when you get the plastic off. When you first buy these things and they end up in your mailbox and you, you take them out and you look at them and say, whoa, that's kind of dull. Uh, and you may not realize that the plastic coating is there. So once you take the plastic coating off, whoa, they're bright and shiny and adorable. So we're almost done peeling this all away. Now that ends dealing with that plastic junk. And I can see a screw hole I missed. <laughs> all right, so that's that. Now what we can do before we start is we can take and lay this down, join me up here on the body, and see how the holes line up. if we can get these things to kind of, sort of kind of go where they're going to go. There's that one. There's that one. Oh, I think it's going to be a good match. Yeah, it is. Very good. Okay, that's cool. So we're ready to start reassembling. So the first thing we've got to do is put our covers back on. Now there's a little slot on these covers on one side where the wires need to pass through. So you just got to make sure you put them on the right way. Otherwise they don't fit quite right. So that's that. Now we've got to start putting things together. And what's the best way to start? That's a damn good question. Um, we could go backwards the way we did and we'll start putting um, the uh, uh, pickups back through. And I think you can see the difference that they are from white to black. I like the change. That was a heck of a good idea. I hadn't even thought about doing that until we started in the project. It's funny how things come up in your mind and all of a sudden you're thinking of something else that you weren't thinking before. Right, that's just some glue there. Let's get that there. Got it. Yeah. I think that's from where they wrap the um, the coil. So that's that one. So now we're going to kind of flip this over. Maybe we can all see. And we're going to put a spring back. Oh, let's put the screw in first. Because that makes more sense. Now I could paint these black. Make them black. Um, the screw heads with the magic marker. But that's going to take more time. And I just don't feel like doing it. <laughs> so let's put that one in there. We'll get our screwdriver back. We'll start this one. All right, there's one screw and spring. We'll get another screw. Start it down the hole. We'll get a spring going. And then we'll put these in a position to function. And make sure we're coming up the right way. Alright, so there's one. 
loop number two. We'll get it part of the way up through the hole. I mean, you see how that's going to look? I think that's going to look really, really nice. All right, so we've got wires going in all wrong directions here. So let's fix these. Get them down under where they belong. All right, we've got one more to go. So I'm going to finish that up, and when I get to the things, we'll come back and we'll do Okay, some. now we've got a lot of this done. <clears throat> we've got the uh, volume control parts and the tone controls back in again. Let's put our light back up. All right, knock it over for him. We'll tighten these guys all up pretty snug. These I tightened already. Now the next thing we've got to do is make sure we get the wires in the cavity the way that they belong. Because if they don't get in there the right way, this won't sit down right. It's sitting funny right now. Yeah, that's good. Geez, and all these holes I think are lining up really nice. So that's kind of the job, really. Now we just got to put the screws back in, uh, rewire it, put the um, strings back on. Oh, we got to do the back still. I forgot. We're almost done. Everything has worked out good. So we're going to do the different pickup covers that I didn't have. But we were able to paint them with a little bit of uh, magic marker. That's why they call the marker magic. Because it does magic stuff. Ooh. All right, that's good. And uh, we've got to do the back. What else are we going to do? We're going to have to set the pickup height. Um, you see some of this is already just way too low. Um, but we'll set this all up nice when we're done. Um, oh, I was going to look for a better looking. All right, so there's all the volume control and the tone knobs back. All the setup. Plastic is off. That's the way it's going to look. It looks pretty wicked cool. Now we've got to flip it over to the back side. And see how well this is going to line up if we've got another championship winner. Upright. Nice. Uh, the spring should be straight, okay? Um, the reason for that is if you bring them in, some of you bring them in at an angle, then you don't have equal tension on all the springs. One of the springs is doing all the work and the other two are just kind of hanging around. So that doesn't do... Ooh, grease. Grease. There's grease in there. None of the holes line up. I line up the holes, we miss it by a country mile. So, what we're going to do is uh, make our own holes. We're going to start over again. We're going to be right on the edge of that one. And I want to try to miss all the other screw holes that are already here. So that I'm not going and getting in trouble with them. All right, so that's secured. Now what we're going to do is drill us some fresh holes. All right, so I'll be right back. I got to go get a drill bit. All right, I got a drill bit, and now we're going to drill some holes. Um, I don't want to go deep. I'm shooting at the back end of this hole to put this hole into. And that's all we need, it's just a, like a pilot hole with a screw to follow going in. Now I'm going to do one on each side here. Now, before I do anything else, what I'm going to do is take the tape off. And then I'm going to peel away the plastic covering because I don't want to deal with it later. I want to deal with it now and be done with it. So we've got all the plastic out of our life. 
or right now anyway. I'm sure there'll be more back. You can see my new pilot holes. Those three, that's what we're going to aim for. There's one. Whoa. So let's start with a manual screwdriver. There's that one. Okay. And then what I think we'll do, and you can see, I think, why I did that, because I needed to move it up. Because these strings load from the back. So you got to have this window open to have access easily to the strings going in and out. Now you can see where the old hole was there. Maybe right on the edge. So i got to drill up higher on that one. And uh, put the rest of the screws in. And we'll be done. One of the last things we'll do before we're totally finished with the back here is to put a little polish on some of the Meguiars. Maybe we should put a witch on the front. Hmm? Oh, I had a nice one. Oh, well. Such is life. Let's flip this back over again. And we'll uh, get ready to do the uh, dreaded return of the strings and see if we can save the strings. That looks pretty cool. All right, now I'm going to go on the Save the Strings campaign. Oh, right, let's hit it with the microfiber. I did, huh? First thing we got to do is separate them because they get all tangled up when they're hanging around there in the back. And then untangling this rat's nest is the biggest part of the job. Now, let's try to do this just a little differently. We'll see if we can put it back. And we'll get our power winder. We'll go with power. And see if we can get this to settle in easily. We saved one string so far. Five more to go. We'll see how we're doing. All right, I'll get back to you when we're done. I'll show you the finish. Okay, so here we are. What we did is we filed down. The string height was um, too high here on the nut. So I filed that down and fixed that. That's all set now. The other thing I'm going to do is to make this a Jerry Garcia dedicated guitar. I ordered some other stickers. And I'm starting out with this guy here, with the eagle, over the moon in the sky, uh, as a Jerry Garcia tribute guitar, dedicated for Halloween. How's that? Bunch of bullshit, but what the heck. We got the orange guitar, which is cool. Came out really nice. The idea with the um, covers to go black. With the magic marker worked out terrific. Um, really, really good. So that's kind of that for right now. We're going to do some other stuff in a while. Um, so that's it. It's kind of done. We'll play it in a bit and give you an, end, an idea of how it sounds. Nice guitar. Nice project. Worked good. Worked out good. You never know where you're going when I stop. Okay, sports fans, here's the Orange Blossom Special. The Jerry Garcia Halloween guitar. Uh, finished up. Pick card changed. Uh, we blackened things. We um, adjusted the truss rod. Um, and now we're going to play it a little. <laughs>
this thing. I'm going to do some more Jerry Garcia kind of stickers on here and uh, dress this up like for Halloween. But that's the final of the orange makeover. Nice, huh? This is a Squire Affinity Stratocaster approved by Fender. Nice guitar. Come out good.